So welcome to the second episode of FS Podcast. Uh, today's episode is about Hyperloop technology, and with us today is Louis Bauer. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, and welcome to Gaching. <laughs> no, it's good to be here. We're right, filming, you may see a different setup from the very first episode, yeah. as we're filming in Munich, in the Technische Universität Munich. Oh, that's exactly. Let's not complicate that. Yeah. Technische <laughs> Universität of Munich, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So with me today, yeah. I'm I'm hosting you see with another get, with another um, host. Um, my partner in crime for this episode <laughs> is George. Hi everyone, um, Louis. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, how do you say that again? Garshin. Garshin. Yeah. Garshin. Yeah. All right. I have to work better on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Louis. Uh, Louis is currently the head of business of uh, War Team of Hyperloop. Exactly. In the Technical yeah. University of Munich, they won uh, two tremendous prizes this year, this year, right? Yeah. yeah. But, well, you can introduce yourself better than I can. So, uh, Luis, <laughs> what do you currently do? Tell us. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, so, I'm part of the VAR Hyperloop team here at the yeah. university, and we are a team competing in the competition from Elon Musk. So, he came up in 2013 with this concept of the Hyperloop, basically a new way of transport. Um, the idea is to transport people between two cities very fast and energy efficient. And you achieve that by traveling with a tube, uh, with a pod down a tube. And uh, two years after that, he launched a competition for students to actually build prototypes for that. And we are a team uh, now in that competition. Oh, okay. so, so three years you've been doing this. What else do you do on the side? Are you is is a student initiative? So yeah, exactly. So the student initiative was founded uh, almost for three years ago. I joined last year for now the second competition that took place in August, and uh, yeah, competing for the second one. You know, before we before we go on, yeah, we've, yeah. we've just so our our audience knows, we've been sure. on a tour before, and we saw some of the three D printers, yeah. some yeah. of the technology that you guys some have. Some the high tech here. Star Trek, and it's and it's absolutely it's yeah like Star Trek. Yeah, right? Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I almost saw Spock down there. <laughs> <laughs> but even in seeing Spock, <laughs> yeah, we we see where you do your work and. Yeah. Did you just so there's a point of reference? We have George here, who's also a bachelor. Yeah. I'm a bachelor student, uh, international management, Frankfurt School. Yeah, he's from Brazil. Yeah, I'm from, I'm from Brazil. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we are very diverse uh, initiative. Probably we are the most diverse initi initiative in Frankfurt School. I don't know that. Let's check. But yeah, ours from uh, uh, Bahamas. I'm from Brazil. We have people from France, Vietnam, Germany, Portugal, Italy, <laughs> Russia. Yes. Yeah, and that's the beauty. I mean, having different people with different insights and mindsets to to yeah. get specialists on 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 different fields, and just interact with them and and, and discuss about different topics. That's that's our main goal. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, just just to add on what you're talking about. We we were initiative with about twenty twenty peep twenty um individuals students mm -hmm. that have joined, but we have about sixteen nationalities. Yeah, but. I think as a point of reference, everybody in our, everyone's excited about the prospects of Hyperloop mm -hmm. and what you have to offer. Yeah. So we, when we were talking about this, we just thought, okay, so you ride in a tube, in a pod, <laughs> yeah. and is it like the Jetsons? Do I wake up from the bathroom that goes right into the kitchen? I think people are very excited about the technology, but a lot of people don't know what it is about. Can you explain more about it? Yeah, so the core idea, is uh, really, as I said, to travel very fast. So in Elon Musk's concept, he um, yeah, basically predicted speeds of up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. Uh, so that would be at the peak speed. So basically Munich to Berlin in 30 minutes. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and Munich. achieving that while, having, uh, while using the lowest energy per passenger. So... Wow. Re really moving fast and very energy efficient. That is the core idea. And cheap as well? Well, uh, there are a lot of, uh, they try to do the cheapest. Yeah. Um, that is uh, to be determined if that works out. Um, of course, you have a lot of infrastructure costs in front. If you have to build the tube, you have to build all the vacuum systems, the stations, uh, then the part itself are quite cheap. But uh, the infrastructure uh, is, uh, of course, high in the beginning. Wow, that requires a lot of work, as I see, right? Yeah, yeah. And 
So you're, how long are you in a group of, of Iperlo? So I joined really in the first days of me getting to university. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before I attended any lectures, <laughs> already working with Elon Musk, I hit up this group. Yeah. yeah but uh, so it's uh, for me about yeah, so, uh, 40 months, about uh, almost a bit more than a year. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was a yeah. tremendous ride. And how did you, did you hear about that? I mean, did you hear about that? You... you, you you got university, you saw the advertisement for the IPLIP team, you decided to apply? Well, uh, how was the process? Well, I uh, already heard of the team yeah. at the time I was still in school. Yeah. So oh. uh, that was during, uh, they prepared the pod for the first competition and uh, they actually had a, um, a crowdfunding campaign to raise some additional money. And that was when I noticed them and I thought that is such a cool project. I would love to go to the university, but uh, my thought back then was that if I go to the university, the competition is already over. Oh, it was uh, planned for one and a half years, yes. and the deadline was uh, back then that uh, they have the competition directly um, when I will get to the university. So I thought there's no way I could get uh, in anymore. Yes. Um, but actually, at that time, they were just um, starting the new team for the second competition. Okay, so one one quick thing. You, yeah. you, 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 I think sometimes we, we've walked around you very humble, <laughs> but how? It's just so our listeners can understand more about you, sure, and your development. You are how 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 old are you? And and <laughs> you've heard some of your prospects. If you could just explain a little yeah. bit more of how you got into um, technology and even somewhat engineering. Into yeah, and don't be humble. <laughs> 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 well, I, I'm I'm always fascinated with um, new technology, um, interesting, exciting projects. Um, I mean, back in school, uh, I was fascinated by uh, multi-copter drones, and yeah, did a project on that. Um, I basically joined a company where I um, assembled these and tried to figure out how they build it and then uh, did my own project and built one myself after that. So How long did it take? Sorry, sorry. No, no, go for it. No, 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 I was excited. I'm <laughs> just wondering, did you build your own drone? Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. Is it better than the other market, I think, right? <laughs> 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 it's definitely harder to steer. Yeah, it's yeah, hard to steer. Yeah, but yeah. And was it, I mean, how you came up with the idea to build your own drone, it's like, it was really, really, I mean, you'd have to apply a lot of effort to, to build your own drone. It's, it's very hard to do that. Or for you, it's just, well, just another thing to do, just another task. Well, there's, uh, there's a thousand ways on how you could build your own drone. Um, you can really start with uh, manufacturing each component, yeah. writing all the source code yourself. That, that, is, that is a long task. And um, there, there are some intermediate steps. Um, it depends on how much, uh, how deep you go into the subject. Um, but essentially, uh, I built a tricopter, so no, yeah. not like the ones you see most with four rotors. My one had only three. And uh, yeah, I built most of the components. I 3D printed or, yeah. yeah. And so at the same time, you were a bachelor student. No, that was back in school. <laughs> that, was that was back, back in <laughs> school. We have to reference that. Back yeah. in which school? The <laughs> high school? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, you, you, yeah. What were you doing back in high school? In high school, yeah. I was just worrying about exams. Exams, uh, yeah, girls. Just, just yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. The, 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 the <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, part of life. <laughs> I maybe should have <laughs> worried more about exams. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I mean, but, but just to, so we get uh, another reference. Yeah. We, we just want to point out, one, one of the reasons that we got you to interview is because you will be giving a TED talk yeah. at mm -hmm. TEDxFS. Yeah. We will reference we'll more about, at the, closer to the end of the podcast, the date, so our viewers yeah. go and listen. It will be December 5th. So if you want to see um, Lewis live in Frankfurt, you have the opportunity to get your <laughs> tickets at their website. Yeah. But, but back to the point, um, when, we, when you talk about your own progression, we we were just in, in downstairs yeah. and we saw the three D printers yeah. and, and we and you the pointed out some jet. of the carbon fi mm -hmm. fibers to help Hyperloop to extend um, so far like uh, to, to reach that speeds of you said a thousand kilometers per hour. Yeah, th so that's that's the final uh, concept for the full scale system. What what goes behind this this technology? 
Well, uh, essentially, to make that work, moving very fast and energy efficient, um, th there, there are two um, problems you have to uh, counter. So first, if you just imagine a car driving down the highway and the car getting faster and faster, the first thing that you notice is uh, the air resistance uh, increases a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you just stick your hand out of the window, you will notice that. But the important thing is that it doesn't increase linearly, but quadratically. So um, as you double the speed, you will need four times the energy to keep going. Yeah. And so Hyperloop uh, achieves that problem by moving through a low pressure tube. Yeah. So um, the air resistance is a lot lower. So that that is countering the, the first problem. And then if you just imagine the car, just uh, imagine without the air, getting faster and faster, the next problem you encounter is that your wheels get very inefficient. Yeah. So the bearings in the wheels, and if you move uh, for that very long, um, that is just very inefficient. And so you need some way of levitating the part contactless within the tube. Yes. And uh, these are the two key things. So moving the part through a low pressure environment and then levitating that part somehow. And there are a lot of ways and concepts to do that. And um, yeah, for example, the student competition uh, is pretty diverse in what you can try to achieve that. And yeah, each team comes up with a different design. Have you ever imagined you were do you were doing something like this when you were like younger? I mean, <laughs> even before high school. Well, I've I've been definitely inspired by it, mm -hmm. um, but I um, I wasn't sure if if that's po if you can uh, if you can really achieve that, and uh, I I wasn't sure if uh, how much work goes into that um, to get that done. And if you can learn that in a few years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. We, we see, I, I need to, for our listeners, we need to just, um, just a point of order. Yeah. We have George here. Yeah. And George <laughs> is a Hyperloop enthusiast. I'm right? enthusiast, yeah. yeah. He's an enthusiast. Don't ask so me you, twice when you hear his that. questions yeah. about, did you ever imagine yourself? In the back of his head, <laughs> he's imagining himself. Oh. Meeting Elon Musk for the first <laughs> time and going on space on his first trip. <laughs> but me, on the other hand, what I like to bring to come back to, <laughs> I like to, for some, you, you explain the technology and all that goes behind, and you, you compared it to a car, how the car's limitations yeah. to yeah. the Hyperloop technology. Yeah. Now, I, I, if one of our, uh, when, we were, when we were planning this, one of our teammates, they, they, they were so keen to talk about safety. Yeah. How safe is this for our tech for us? Is it safer than a plane? How how, how safe are, are these prospects? Well, uh, the, the first uh, really uh, advantage is that you um, move through a closed environment. So it's not like at a train track where uh, trees can fall in and then everything has to stop. Uh, you're in a close a closed tube environment. Um, there's there's nothing really uh, that can um, happen. Uh, I mean, there, there are of course, is, uh, some theories of what would happen at a terrorist attack. And uh, there, are, there are a lot of new concerns, because if, um, yeah, sh sure, if the train gets, or the tube gets hurt, or damaged at some point, um, or the traffic. So the idea, basically, is to have small parts, but that travel really fast, and uh, at really, so you have a, a high throughput yeah. There are a lot of parts traveling to, to, through the tube fast. And um, yeah, there, there are a lot of uh, safety concerns. What are, what are you doing uh, for evacuation? Um, pump air back in. What are the um, yeah, um, exit, uh, emergency exits? How do they look like? And there's a lot of new stuff to define right now um, yeah, but that we're really excited about. So yeah, yeah go so ahead. there's a lot. So there are a lot of things to be planned, or oh, they're they're already being planned, right? Yeah, yeah. So they are planned, but especially from companies that are uh, trying to build the full-scale Hyperloop mm -hmm. system, uh, we have the advantage that we, as a student team, only have to focus on building a cool and fast pod, and uh, SpaceX has to figure out how to build the, the track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that, that's very exciting. I think one one of the things we sometimes forget is the development of our transportation system, how many mistakes it took in order to get where we are now. Yeah. And I, I brought up the Jetsons earlier, but 
the, the, the prospects of how, how, <laughs> how much faster we can move eventually it's, it's exciting to me, but at the same time, I want to be cautious. No, 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 no offense, Josh. No, <laughs> I won't take it bad. I mean, don't ask me twice. I'll, of, I'll of course, I'll go in hyperloop and then whenever it's going to be ready. <laughs> I think you do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right? absolutely. I won't think twice. Me, I'm not so sure. But yeah. I'm not so sure he goes lower then. <laughs> but but yeah. what a question that came to mind is now you, you said these, these, these companies are there. And that that are that are solving these problems. Yeah. When when can we expect this on the market? Yeah, we are very keen to see it as early as possible. Mm -hmm. um, Hyperloop One, one of the companies that has already built a small test track and is now trying to build a larger one, um, is trying to do that in Dubai, and we are really uh, keen to see that in the next few years. Uh, Luis, explain us something. Um, the Hyperloop competition of SpaceX doesn't have anything to do with Hyperloop One. Yeah, exactly. No. Uh, so, um, as Elon Musk published this concept uh, back in 2013, um, these companies uh, started independently from him yeah. and uh, tried to build or uh, commercially um, build that full scale Hyperloop system. And Elon Musk, two years after that, started then the student initiative to um, yeah start to try different concepts, um, build prototypes of that, or let student teams build that, and uh, try different uh, technologies. So basically, every university in the world can apply yeah, and exactly. register for, exactly. for the Hyperloop uh, competition. Exactly. The first competition was already well, was also open to companies, but yeah. uh, they are now only focusing on student teams, mm -hmm. and it's really student teams from around the world. So there are teams from Japan, uh, a few teams from Germany, uh, from Switzerland, wow. and of course from the U.S. Uh, it's really uh, yeah worldwide. How many people you have here in your team? So we are about thirty students. Yeah. Really, um, very different background. Most of them, of course, mechanical engineering, um, of, of course, uh, computer scientists, electrical engineers, a few business people, physicists for the simulations. Uh, yeah. And I've heard you have a uh, next competition coming with yeah. next summer, right? Next competition is oh. upcoming next year in uh, June or July. But yeah. the, let's, let's talk about the... You've already won. Oh. <laughs> You've already won the first, the first two competitions. No, no once in size, no? So uh, we, um, the first competition had uh, two goals, um, and there were two winners. But we were gladly one of them. Um, so the main focus was on building a part that was close to the design Elon Musk proposed. And um, so you saw when we entered the university mm -hmm. that was our huge part, 600 kilograms heavy, with the compressor in the front. Yeah. So uh, that, is, that was the original Elon Musk design to have a compressor in the front so that if your pod diameter is quite similar to the tube diameter, mm -hmm. you would need to suck in the remaining air that gets in front, yeah. that gets compressed in front of the pod. Even if you're in a low pressure environment, there's still some air that is um, building up in front of that. Yes. And if there's no way to escape, you have to have a compressor to do that. And his idea was to then compress that air and use that air as a levitation system. So if you can imagine an air hockey table where the air comes out from the bottom so your chip floats, mm -hmm. uh, it's like that, just turned around, the air should come from the pod and let the pod levitate yeah. on a small cushion of air. How hard was it to make that? <laughs> so that was one design yeah. um, for the levitation. Our team focused on magnetic levitation mm -hmm. Um, because, uh, yeah, th there are a lot of differences um, also on uh, how fast you can build that, uh, what resistance you get at which speeds. And we focus on yeah, having passive magnets uh, that then levitate the pod at certain speeds. All right. So at certain speeds, okay. So that was the first part. What was the second yeah. part of the competition? So the second competition, the goal was quite easy was only about maximum speed. Is which team could accelerate fastest? And the, the uh, tube is quite short, so it's uh, only about a mile long. 
and which team could ex uh, reach the highest speed there. Yeah. And, and which, which, which part of the competition did you win? <laughs> so at the first um, competition, our team uh, back then won the prize for the f fastest pod, ironically, because it was the only pod that finished the whole tube run. <laughs> All the other parts <laughs> stopped <laughs> in the middle. And uh, now for the second competition, uh, we reached a speed of 324 kilometers per hour. Wow. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> <Wow. laughs> we won the competition with uh, quite advantage. That was just when? That was, that was in June, the second competition. Yeah, yeah. When can we expect to see the next? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next competition, there will be uh, two competitions divided. You will have, again, one uh, about speed and then uh, one about uh, showing a, a levitation system on an even smaller track. Okay. And um, yeah, we are uh, very keen to um, improve our speed even more. And bring the prize back to Munich. Yeah. Or to bring another prize <laughs> to Munich, actually, right? <laughs> When when we first when on our way here, we were looking at some of the the possibilities to see this technology, and we saw that between San Francisco and LA, there's yeah. the drive is I think yeah. what six and a half six hours? and a half hours yeah. yeah. But Seven. when we saw the the hyperloop would have taken it what thirty minutes or so. Yeah, yeah. So that that was the initial route Elon Musk planned. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. San Francisco, Los Angeles. <laughs> so do you see this happen in, in Germany? Well, definitely not uh, as a first strike in Germany, yeah. just because here are a lot of obstacles. We already have a rail infrastructure, yeah. and um, a, a big uh, obstacle is also moving over mountains. So if you have large uh, height differences, and oh. um, yeah, you, you will uh, you would need to bore a tunnel, mm -hmm. or um, yeah. Um, make somehow uh, even the height somehow with pillars, which is not that easy. Where do you think Hyperloop is going to be built uh, first? So a lot of uh, promising concepts are currently in Dubai, yeah. just because they, um, they don't have s that much infrastructure already um, with rails. Uh, so there are a lot of new opportunities, and of course they have the money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a big part of it. I right? think the money must play a big role. Yeah. There. <laughs> before, before we get into the full business um, opportunities mm -hmm. that can flow from Hyperloop, mm -hmm. I'd just like to get into, because you're the head of War Hyperloop's business division. Yeah. Well, what are some of the functions that you, that you do from a day-to-day -day basis? Well, uh, my main part is um, we have to... Uh, as, as the mechanical team is trying to figure out the most sensible concept that we could come up with, if they, uh, have, if they decide on a concept they, that uh, they want to build, it is that day that they want to order parts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and <laughs> <They want it. laughs> on that day, we should have money <laughs> to buy these parts and realize the concept. And so that was my main part, to find partners, companies that help us mm -hmm. either manufacture parts, help us with their parts that they uh, produce themselves, or just help us financially. And wow. as a, oh, sorry. No, as a student, as a student initiative, yeah, you could exactly. just name some of the sponsors. I, I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, I, sure. We, we, we were motivated. I don't know about you, George. Yeah, totally. I mean, um, we see that, well, when we go to the website, we see that a lot of huge companies are sponsoring your project, uh, your initiative. Huh? Yeah. How'd you get them? Yeah, so <laughs> that was my day-to-day -day work. Um, so one of our main uh, our main partner or sponsor is Airbus. Mm -hmm. They help us uh, really a lot. But uh, as you look on my back, um, these are <laughs> 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 yeah. It's like uh, look at my also, resume, right? <laughs> yeah. So these are all the sponsors uh, we have. Wow. Or, or uh, yeah, um, but. Without that, it, it wouldn't be possible. The competition itself doesn't have a financial prize, mm -hmm. so you win a trophy, but for the next competition, you will still need to come up with uh, new partners uh, to build that and realize that concept. And just coming back to you, how, how did you cope with the workload, being head of business of War Ipolute and being also a bachelor student? How, is it, how, is it for, how do you manage that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> The, the 
best part is that um, as the the more of the technical studies, yeah. they are very uh, they focus on that you have to be in the lectures. They want you to be there, uh, and uh, it is mandatory to be there. Now, with my um, technology management studies here, Tom, I'm very flexible. Um, they uh, as a, that, that's a big course of study, mm -hmm. so 800 students. Wow. They uh, take videos of all the lectures. And uh, you're pretty flexible in when you want to learn. Even if it's midnight, you can still uh, watch the lectures of the last few weeks. And yeah, that, that was uh, the biggest advantage to uh, managing so that. So you're still able to balance it with a, because it's almost like a full-time job. Yeah, well, it started, uh, we communicated the, in the beginning that it's about 20 hours a week, maybe. Uh, so it's like a part-time job. Mm -hmm. um, but that was for the first few months, right? But in the last uh, four to five months, it really turned out to be more than a full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Does it get worse when it's closer to the competition? Um, it depends really on what part you work uh, in. Um, but yes, uh, in f uh, the, the biggest... Um, so directly in front of the competition, you have to pass a lot of tests to... Um, get into the tube, and uh, so it's a list of 100 tests that you wow. by SpaceX engineers they, you have to meet, and that that is really tense, and uh, the few months uh, or weeks before we ship everything to the US is also pretty intense. Uh, I, yeah, I told you before that we need to uh, list every single item yeah. we have for yes. customs, and as we take a lot of spare parts yeah. with us to the US, uh, that was really a big stack of paper. <laughs> wow. Can just imagine that. I can just imagine that. Yeah. Now, now I'd like to get into the business. Of yeah. Yourself. You mentioned earlier, a part of that's something that may seem so unattractive is the high intense investment cost that comes with the Hyperloop technology. Yeah. yeah. How? In which ways? Because we, we're business students. We come from mm -hmm. Frankfurt School. Yeah. In which ways can do you see? Uh, many countries or many um, companies being able to exploit this, given that the fact that there may be a new technology that advances that may be more cost efficient. What, what, what opportunities do you see? Well, uh, the, the one uh, investment, of course, is the financial investment. Uh, th that's, of course, um, very helpful to have uh, government support. But um, you also, of course, need the government support for getting the lands, yes. to, uh, to the rights to build that, mm -hmm. uh, which can be uh, quite difficult uh, for, for such long tracks. And um, that's really a major part to uh, now that there's a concept and um, there are some test tubes with one mile, uh, a few hundred meters to uh, build a... Um, a larger system uh, that can has a uh, already a use case and for which you can get the investments and uh, government support. But um, well, I'm enthusiastic. So I'm just saying, as 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 I see the benefits of Hyperloop, they they are yeah they say they speak louder than investment itself. How how do you, how do you see that? I mean, how do you see the benefits that Hyperloop could could bring to? to different countries or to places that there's not much infrastru infrastructure right now? Yeah, the, the, the most uh, interesting part is that um, you create a lot of... So there, there's the demand that already exists, mm -hmm. but with a Hyperloop system, you would instantly create completely new demand. So just imagine um, a connection from uh, Munich to Berlin or... Um, maybe from a smaller town to a larger main city. Now it opens up opportunities for people to live in that smaller city, and but to work in that larger city and commute every day with the Hyperloop just because it's uh, so fast and uh, it's, it would be faster, if, uh, even faster sometimes than living in a suburban area and uh, commuting with your car. So that really opens up tremendous opportunities to where you live versus where you work or where you have to uh, be on a daily basis. Wow. Wow. So basically, here in Germany, there are a lot of um, small cities, small towns. And if you 
if it happens you, ha you, you have a job, let's say, in Berlin or in Frankfurt, and you live in a small town, you don't have actually to move to the big city, you can just keep living in your in your town and just commute in tat within 30 minutes to... to that, that, that's the reason that, that, would that's be, uh, that, that would be a, uh, a feasible option. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you have to... Uh, what, what a lot of people um, don't get at the first time is that um, Hyperloop is not really a competition to existing train systems, but more to uh, medium range uh, f flights. Yeah. As you create a lot of the atm uh, atmosphere you would have on a plane back on the ground. Oh. Wow. And uh, so it will be very interesting for uh, ra distances from, yeah, w w approximately 200 kilometers to 800, 1,000 kilometers. That, and that word, you, you mentioned the threat or the competition. Um, a lot of, of what has been said is that Hyperloop is not disruptive. Mm -hmm. uh, I, how can, I, I'm skeptic here, so let me, <laughs> let me, play, let me play my card. All it, right. It, in many ways, that will be disruptive to the airline system. If yeah. it's much more, if it works and it's effective, then it could it could it could move the way we move uh, transportation for the next years. I mean, that's for airlines. It must be scary. It's it's definitely disrupting, but it's uh, disrupting in a very local uh, space. So uh, you first have, of course, to build the infrastructure, and then the infrastructure is just there in this place. So it just replaces, for example, the air, the airline from Munich to Berlin. Um, whereas uh, with airplanes, of course, you have the advantage you just build the airports and have the um, um, yeah the airplanes traveling between each other, mm -hmm. but can uh, choose any point-to-point -point connection you want. Uh, whereas Hyperloop is this fixed um, infrastructure from two to from two cities. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, um, Luis, you, you, you're going to talk more about Hyperloop <laughs> on, on on TEDx FS yeah. right on second December. Uh, of this year, uh, in a few weeks from now, uh, just just um, we have all. We, I mean, by the end of our podcast, of our episodes, we would like to to ask a few questions sure. uh, from f some listeners, from um, questions that we think might be interesting to get an insight from you. So the first question that I have is: Do you have a favorite book? Favorite book. My story on reading books is really interesting because uh, during school, uh, I really hated reading books. Mm -hmm. it, it was like, um, yeah, I, I barely read the one we are told to do so. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, uh, it completely changed. It uh, flipped uh, w 180 degrees. And um, now, now I'm currently I'm reading... Uh, more than one or two books a week. Mm -hmm. um, one or two books a week? Yeah. Okay. Um, but my favorite book, let me see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know it's a tough question. But no, no. Okay. Th now that I thought of it, it's pretty easy. Yeah. The, okay. the bio biography from Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. I read yeah. it in four hours. That's your favorite book? Yeah. That's, That's his mine book. too. <laughs> oh, man. Just yeah. two weeks ago, he's like, man, I have to give it to you. But only I'm going to give is, you that. Only thing is, I gave it to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I have to track them down. They're, they're trying to take my book. Yeah, I'm going to give you one. But I mean, I just, I just this question didn't pop out of nowhere. Uh, this question is more to get a sense if you had to recommend a book for a uh, high school student or for someone who's trying to get a technical university in Munich or a technical university in Germany or worldwide uh, and wants to work in the future with Hyperloop or any different technology that might bring some benefit to humanity or be something new. Yeah. What is, I mean, where do you find inspiration? Where do you find inspiration? I find my inspiration uh, mostly in videos. I'm a very visual guy. Mm -hmm. um, mm, yeah, I, I just, for example, seeing seeing the the rocket uh, launches from Elon Musk's SpaceX, mm -hmm. or um, e even the concepts uh, when he, um, yeah, um, 
when he published a Hyperloop design, he published a 50-page uh, uh, paper, uh, and just seeing the renderings, the the um, s seeing visual uh, visual representation of uh, the idea he has, um, I find it fascinating. And the, I, I mean, yeah. oh, one 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 thing I'd like to say, you you mentioned, and and this isn't the first time you mentioned it. You mentioned it on our tour as well. That many of your students are very motivated by Elon Musk and the opportunities to produce something that could affect the world, the, the world of change. How was it for you to meet Elon Musk? <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely uh, one of the most interesting experiences. Um, as you work one year mm -hmm. for that uh, one day uh, on the final competition, and it wasn't even sure, uh, we weren't sure if Elon even w would uh, come and show up. Um, I mean, uh, you uh, notice very fast that he's uh, pretty introverted, mm -hmm. and he's very demanding. He's very yeah. demanding. <laughs> uh, so we were the last team at the competition uh, that uh, made the run, and the teams before us reached uh, the f uh, third place was at a speed of around 40 kilometers per hour, and the second team of around 100 kilometers per hour. And so as we reached the speed of 324 kilometers per hour, it was already clear that we won <laughs> by a very far margin. Yeah. And the first comment he made was that, yeah, well, in that tube with that length, uh, you might be able to reach 600 kilometers per hour. <laughs> 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 yeah. So he set the goal even. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very demanding, but uh, yeah, very interesting to hear his uh, thoughts on what he's doing with the boring company. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. yeah. And um, are you planning to work with Hyperloop or, I don't know, with him after you're graduating? Well, uh, there are some uh, people, f uh, mm -hmm. some students from our group that. Uh, will now uh, work in some of the companies from Elon. Oh, nice. um, I myself, as I'm in my third semester, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will need to uh, yeah, stick to the university a bit, but mm -hmm. it's definitely fascinating. Yeah. OK. OK. You, one. Back to the questions. Yeah, back to the, actually, we, we're, we're nearing the end of this episode of FS Podcast. Um, before we go, I'd just like to, again, mention that you will be on um, TEDx <laughs> FS <laughs> on, on the, the 2nd of December. And before we go, I'd just like to thank um, TED, TEDx FS because if it weren't for them, uh, mm. Maurice, Leon, and also Victoria, who's here with us as a part of FS Podcast as well, um, it, it wouldn't be possible to be here to interview. And I'd like to thank you as well for cooperating with us. Right, sure, sure. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. No, before, before we go, I'd just like to remind. Um, Remind our viewers, we, FS Podcast, what we do is we discuss um, diverse topics each and every episode, and we bring experts on the subject, <laughs> so, no, uh, yeah, to, to, to discuss their experiences and also the successes, but also the challenges that they face. Each mm -hmm. episode, we try to do that. But um, for our viewers, thank you so much for watching this episode. It's, it's awesome to have you here. And please subscribe on our YouTube. Um, check us out on SoundCloud and... Also on iTunes. iTunes, yeah. And leave a comment. Anything you want to hear, we'd, we'd like to share share us, and but also provide feedback. We love to hear what you have to say. Yeah. And, and George. And Luis, thank you so much. We're looking forward to have you in Frankfurt. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely after the tad, let's drink a beer. Oh, right. you know it's yeah. We we won't oh, be here Munich. for the full day, but the beer isn't as good as it is in Munich. <laughs> <laughs> in yeah. Frankfurt after uh, after TEDxFS, yeah. we can we can celebrate. Sure, right? sure. Thank you. All right. All the best and take care. Take care.